It would take 36 years to finally find out who killed her. Hello, true crimeers. This is the case of Mary Davis. Viewer discretion is advised. Mary Davis lived in Lexington, North Carolina, and at the time of this case, she was 29 years old and the mother to two children. And she also had a husband who was the father of both her kids. His name is Richard. Unfortunately, I really don't have a lot of, or much at all, backstory to Mary Davis. One of Mary's daughters, Tracy, was only one year old when this case occurred, and she never got to know her mom. Her daughter would, you know, years later as an adult say that she always heard her mom was this really kind and sweet person, that she was an incredibly patient person, very patient mom. She worked hard and she loved anyone who came across her. So this case occurred in 1987, specifically May 30th, 1987. That morning, Mary's husband Richard saw her and he left the house to go I guess to his sister's home because they, they were gonna go swimming. And when he came back home later that afternoon, he was expecting Mary to be home because Mary was supposed to be working that morning slash afternoon and she should have been home by the time he got home, but she wasn't. Mary worked at a local hardware store called Lanier's Hardware. And from what I understand, she did was confirmed to go to work that day. And then she took her lunch break and then she never came back from that lunch break. And since Mary didn't come home that night, uh, they looked around for her themselves, but eventually they went to police that evening to report Mary missing. And unfortunately, the search would not last long. Uh, they would find Mary, I believe, the following day. At the time, there was a Winn-Dixie store, which I don't think is any longer a Winn-Dixie there. And the store was located on 802 East Center Street which is in Lexington, North Carolina. And there was, I guess, a dumpster behind this building and behind that dumpster or near that dumpster was a body of a female. The body would quickly be identified as 29-year-old Mary Davis. I can't seem to find the exact cause of her death. I just know that it ruled her death a very obvious homicide. And police back in 1987 said they had evidence, they collected evidence, they you know did some swabs, they checked underneath her fingernails. I don't know if they found like male bodily fluid or not, but they had some kind of DNA on her or near her that was not her DNA. However, back in 1987, the DNA testing was extremely limited. There was really not much they can do with it. And I know they investigated and they looked into her life and it sounds like at one point her husband Richard was considered a suspect because I was watching a news article that said that, you know, this being years later, Richard was finally cleared of having anything to do with his wife's murder. But I don't see anything specific about if they really felt he was or if they, you know, looked into him. I'm sure they did. I mean, she, he was her husband, and that's pretty much the first person you look at. They, of course, interviewed everybody that she had worked with, especially that day. They interviewed people that she would have gone to get lunch from, like whatever place she went to. They interviewed her friends, her family and they just weren't getting much. Uh, there was really nobody in Mary's life that hated her, that anyone knew. Uh, she didn't have any ex-lovers, like jilted exes. She wasn't having an affair. There weren't any co-workers that like hated her guts or anything like that. It was just a mystery. Like she goes to work, then leaves to go to lunch and never comes back because someone apparently in broad daylight kidnapped her and murdered her. And just all their investigating just didn't really lead to anything back then. And unfortunately, Mary's case goes cold and it would take roughly 36 years uh, later to finally get a break in the case. So like I said earlier, they had DNA, but they weren't able to do much with it back in 1987. They tested it over the years, but 
you know, still DNA technology wasn't uh, as big as it, as it is now. So by 2023, they were able to take all of the evidence they had. They were able to try to get more DNA from the evidence they had. I'm assuming things like clothing and whatnot. And again, I'm not 100% sure if there was male bodily fluid. They were able to take some of this DNA and plug it into their database. And in 2023, they got a hit. It matched someone. It came back to a man named Russell Grant Wood. Someone who, from what I can tell, did not exactly pop up on their radar back in 1987. However, they have said that Russell and Mary knew each other. They were acquaintances. But in terms of what their relationship was, is they haven't really said. All they really said is that they did know each other. However, unfortunately, uh, Russell Wood will never face justice. He will never be arrested. He will never be charged or indicted. He will never have to go through a trial. He will never have to be found guilty and sentenced to life in prison without parole. Because in 2013, Russell Wood died. They stated that if alive today, he would be charged, would have been charged with first degree murder and first degree kidnapping. And so with that, it just came to a very bittersweet end, I guess. There's, these types of situations are always bittersweet because it's like, you know who did it. You have the answer. You finally can have that piece of like, okay, we have a name. We know who the monster was, but... It's also like they're never going to have to face consequences for what they did. I've been reading some like a couple articles here and there and that has like message boards and whatnot. And there were people who said that this guy, Russell Wood, was one of those unsuspecting guys. He was like a kind, nice person. You never would expect him to have done this. People who had worked with him or knew him were just like, it's just they were completely surprised that it, this, that it was him. But that's often the case. I mean, I, I've told many stories before where the killer was someone that nobody would expect. The killer was someone who the victim trusted. And that, that might be the case here too. This might be something where maybe she met him for lunch. Maybe she ran into him for lunch. They had a conversation and then something led to something that ended up in him killing her. And I believe more than likely raped her. This is one of those things where it's like, you just, you never really truly know a person and what they're capable of. You never know if a monster is hiding inside someone you know well, love, and trust. And so Mary Davis and her family, they do not get legal justice, unfortunately. The man doesn't have to sit in a prison cell for the rest of his life and, you know, having never breathed free air again as a living person. But you can say to some degree that this is a form of justice, right? You know, he can't hurt anyone ever again. And so while it may not have been legal justice, uh, Mary, in some way, shape, or form, and her family, did get uh, the different kind of justice that she still rightfully deserved. But... That is it for this case. True crime, Aruni, Dooney, Dingleberry Dongs. I know this was a short one. Uh, that's that's the unfortunate thing when I pick my cases at random. Um, I never know how much information there's going to be. But uh, hopefully, uh, if you're new here, hello, my name is Mike. I tell true crime stories here on YouTube. So please subscribe if you are into that kind of thing. I also tell short form true crime stories over on TikTok. Uh, my TikTok is linked in the link tree in the description of this video below. Also in the description, you will find my email address. If there's a case you want me to cover, just send me a really quick email and just send me the name of the case or the person, the victim, where it happened and when it happened. I'll add that name to my list. The list is getting close to 6,400 names long. I pick the cases, like I said, at random. So I can't promise you when I'll cover that case, but I will get to it eventually. But uh, that's it. That is it for this video. True crime Aroonies. Uh, how do you like the haircut, by the way? You know, it's pretty fly. I, no one says that. Okay. Anyway, uh, so until the next video, until the next case, ta-ta for now. True crime Aroonies. Oh, thank you.